This is trigonometry video lecture for section 3.3 on circular functions. So now is our big introduction to the unit circle. The unit circle is the circle that's centered at the origin and it has radius one. So the radius of this circle is one, that's why it's called a unit circle. And the equation of the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals one. That should make sense, we studied circles at the very beginning of the course. And remember, circles had the form x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where h, k is the center. So since the center is 0, 0, we just have x squared plus y squared, and the radius is 1. OK, what we're going to do now is look at angles and their relationship to the unit circle and the values of the trigonometric functions. So suppose the terminal side of angle theta, which is drawn in standard position, intersects the unit circle at a point x comma y. Now because the radius of the unit circle is 1, then that means the distance from the origin to the point x, y is 1. So let's highlight the distance from the origin to the point. And by the first definition for the trigonometric functions, we have the following. So our first definition was that cosine of theta is equal to x divided by r. So we don't know what the x-coordinate is, but I know in the unit circle the radius is 1. So that means cosine of theta is just equal to the value of the x-coordinate of the terminal side of that angle theta where it hits the unit circle. Also, also, sine of theta, which is equal to y divided by r, in this case would be y divided by 1, which is y. And this is very special because that means on a unit circle, okay, you could think of the relationship as matching up beautifully. x and y corresponds to cosine of theta and sine of theta. And the cool thing is, look, it's in alphabetical order. X comes first in the alphabet, just like C comes before S in the alphabet. X, Y, cosine theta, sine theta. Now, as we travel around the unit circle, starting at one, zero, the points that we come across all have coordinates, cosine of T, sine of T, or theta, whatever, where T in this case is the distance traveled because we're talking in radians instead of degrees. You can use them interchangeably. Notice that t will be positive if we travel in the counterclockwise direction, but negative if we travel in the clockwise direction. When we define the trigonometric functions this way, then we call them circular functions because of their relationship to the unit circle. So here's a completed unit circle. And you can think of it this way. Here at 30 degrees, which we know now is equal to pi over 6 radians, rad 3 over 2 comma 1 half are the coordinates of this point right here on the unit circle that is intersected by the terminal side of an angle that has a 30 degree measure. And notice they precisely give us the value of cosine of 30 degrees and sine of 30 degrees. We know that cosine of 30 degrees is equal to rad 3 over 2, and sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half. But now you're going to break away from looking at that chart and just put this to memory. The way I did it when I first learned the unit circle was, you know, there's three numbers that pop up. It's either rad 3 over 2, 1 half, or rad 2 over 2. I know this one goes with all of the 45 degree reference angles or pi over 4s. And then rad 3 over 2 and 1 half switch between sine and cosine depending if the reference angle is 30 or 60. And I just told myself, well, hey, for the 30 degrees, the 3 pops up first. So the rad 3 comes first on 30 degrees, which matches with cosine. And then they do a little switcheroo at 60 degrees, and now cosine is 1 half, and sine is rad 3 over 2. You could think of it that way. Other people like thinking of the numbers getting smaller. So what do we mean by that? I'll tell you all the tricks that 
my students have shared with me over the years. Okay, so you have three, two, one. Rad three, rad two, rad one is still one. So it's going from big to small, and then the other numerators go the other way. So rad one, rad two, rad three, and then divide all of them by two. This one should just be obvious because you look at the point on the unit circle, like the coordinates are one, zero. The coordinates are here, zero, one. Then the only thing you do, you just reflect the points. So notice here, here's one half, rad three over two. It's gonna have the same reference angle as over here at 120. But notice here, x coordinates are negative, y coordinates are positive in quadrant two. So observe that all of these x's have minus signs in front of them, as you would expect. Then you drop down here to quadrant three, it's negative, negative, as we can see, and then quadrant four here is positive, negative. Okay, do whatever you need to do to put this to memory. You should be able to fill in a blank unit circle, like listing all of the degree measures here, the corresponding radian measure, and then what the coordinates are for each of those points on the unit circle, okay? And then from here on out, when you're asked what's cosine of 30 degrees, what's cosine of 60 degrees, what's cosine of 210, you're just gonna imagine the unit circle instead of referencing your chart. You're not gonna reference the unit circle. You're gonna memorize this bad boy because you're gonna need it the rest of your math career. Okay, here we go. And to reiterate, the x and y coordinate of each point shown are the cosine and sine respectively of the associated angle or distance. So I'll kind of talk you through what I think in my head, and I'm gonna write out more than I would normally write if I was asked to compute these, just so you guys have a feel for the reasoning process. So first one is sine of negative two pi over three. I know I'm gonna have a pi over three reference angle. The reference angle always matches the denominator, okay? I just gotta figure out which quadrant I'm in. So since it's negative two pi over three, just think to yourself this way, x-axis, y-axis. All the way to the negative x-axis would be negative three pi over three, but we're not going all the way, we're only going negative two pi over three. So negative two pi over three, that's more than halfway, it would stop somewhere around there. So I know I'm in quadrant three. And then you think to yourself, wait, what's sine of pi over three? That's the same as 60 degrees. So it's rad three over two. And since we're in quadrant three, this is gonna be negative rad three over two. And you're done. Okay. So usually like this part I could do in my head and figuring out that it's in quadrant three, but for now, draw it out if you need to. Okay, secant of five pi over six. Again, I know that the reference angle is gonna be a pi over six reference angle. How do I know that? It's gonna have the same denominator. So reference angle is pi over six. Now, let's figure out what quadrant we're in. Oh my, so pi over six, if I had gone all the way to the negative x-axis, that would be six pi over six, but we're stopping one short. So if we're stopping one short, we're stopping here in quadrant two. So we are in quadrant two, people. In quadrant two, secant's negative, because x's are negative. Cosine matches the sine of x. So what's cosine of pi over six? Then take the reciprocal. So it's gonna be rad three over two. Reciprocal of rad three over two is two over rad three. If I rationalize, it's two rad three over three. Now, since we are in quadrant two, x's are negative, which means secant is going to be negative. And that's our final answer. So secant of five pi over six is negative two rad three over three. Let me scoot this over so I can make that negative sign more prominent. Okay, good. What about cotangent of three pi over two? Let's see. Three pi over two, x-axis, y-axis. So remember, half a revolution is pi. That's pi, which is two pi over two. Up here is one pi over two. So count with me. 
1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2. Here's 3 pi over 2 down there, 3 pi over 2. Could you tell me what the coordinates of the unit circle are down there at 3 pi over 2? Right here. What is that as an ordered pair? If you were to tell me to plot that point, what would its coordinates be? Yes, 0, negative 1. Now, cotangent, we know, is x divided by y. So cotangent of 3 pi over 2 is going to be 0 over negative 1, which is 0. Good. That's it. Okay, cosine of 11 pi over 6. So which quadrant is 11 pi over 6 in? Did you figure it out? Well, if it was 12 pi over 6, that would be 2 pi, right? So think about it that way. All the way around is 2 pi. Let's scoot this guy up. X-axis, Y-axis. So we're not quite going all the way around. We're going almost all the way around, but we're stopping short right there at 11 pi over 6. And the reference angle, theta hat, is going to be pi over 6. Can you think of what the coordinates are there? It's going to be rad 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. Since we need cosine, it's going to be the x coordinate, quadrant 4, so x is positive. So this is rad 3 over 2. OK, good. I know the directions they use the unit circle, so you can practice, you know, having it next to you while you work on these but I'm just trying to help you break free because you won't always be able to have one especially not on the exams no 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 cosecant of 4 pi over 3 so you're gonna think reciprocal of sine at 4 pi over 3 so where's 4 pi over 3 well let's think all the way here is pi, that's 3 pi over 3, so you go a little bit more. So 4 pi over 3 is somewhere there. Do you know what the coordinates are on the unit circle there? What's a pi over 3 reference angle? Yes, you're going to have negative 1 half, negative rod 3 over 2. Since it's cosecant, I'm going to take the reciprocal of the y coordinate, reciprocal of sine. So cosecant of 4 pi over 3 is equal to negative 2 over rad 3, and then rationalize that. So negative 2 rad 3 over 3. Good. All right, last one like this, tangent 5 pi over 4. You can take a peek at the unit circle, but I'll show you how to do it without it. So 5 pi over 4, can you find which quadrant that's in? It is in quadrant 3, correct. Here's the unit circle. 5 pi over 4. This is 4 pi over 4. Then you go a little bit more. There's 5 pi over 4. And then I think, okay, the reference angle is pi over 4. That's the 45 degree one. Both coordinates are the same. Negative rod 2 over 2. Negative rod 2 over 2. Tangent's just going to be 1. So tangent of 5 pi over 4 is equal to sine divided by cosine or y divided by x, which is positive 1. Negative divided by negative cancels. Okay, now go ahead. You can look at your unit circle and use it to find all the values of theta between 0 and 2 pi for which the given statement is true. So for part A, they're asking us to find all the values where cosine of theta is equal to negative one-half. So what does that mean? I'm going to scroll back up to my unit circle here. And they want us to find all the values where cosine is equal to negative one-half. I'll erase this mess. Okay, so cosine corresponds with the x-coordinates. So where are the x-coordinates equal to negative one-half? Let's see. I see one of them here. I see another one here. That's it. 
Do they want the answer in degrees or radians? Well, notice the directions said between 0 and 2 pi. Do you see that? So they're talking radians. So 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3 is the answer. That's how I found it. Okay, so let's come back here and answer the question. Theta is 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. That's it. Later, you'll be able to think this to yourself and not even check the unit circle. Okay, example B, tangent of theta equals negative rad 3. So I like to always think of tangent theta when this comes up in terms of sine and cosine. And I go, oh, if tangent's rad 3 or negative rad 3, that means sine must have been rad 3 over 2. Cosine must have been a half. One of them's negative. And then the 2's canceled out. And that's how we ended up with the negative rad 3. So can you find anywhere on the unit circle where sine is rad 3 over 2, cosine is 1 half, and only one of them is negative? Not both, because then the two negatives would cancel out. So I'll give you a second. Go check your unit circle. See if you can find where the x coordinate is 1 half, the y coordinate is rad 3 over 2, and one of them, only one of them is negative. Did you find it? It should be at either 2 pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. All right, good. And we know tangents only negative in quadrants 2 and 4, so you, hopefully you only searched there. Yeah? Okay, last thing. We finally get to switch our calculators out of degree mode into radian mode. Can you believe it? Today is a monumental day. So it says use a calculator to approximate each value to four decimal places. Notice each of these angles for theta does not have a degree sign next to it. So put your calculator in radian mode. Okay, so however you switched it to degree, switch it back. Mine has this key at the top that says DRG. So all I do is I push that and then I scroll over to where it says RAD and then I hit enter. And then now it says RAD in the bottom of my screen. Just get it so it switches. You should see a little R or RAD. That way you know you're in radian mode. Okay, so let's go ahead. Punch in cosine of negative 2.5 and then round your answer to four decimal places. Did you do it? You should have negative 0 0.8011. Okay. Good. And then one more, just for good measure. We have cosecant of rad 3 over 2. Now remember, cosecant is reciprocal function with sine. So you should just punch in 1 divided by sine of rad 3 over 2. And then when you're punching this in your calculator, I'll kind of enter the keystrokes the way they look. So you have 1, you hit divided by, then you hit sine, and it opens up some parentheses. Then you hit your radical key. It'll open more parentheses for you. Make sure you close them, okay? And then do divided by 2, and then close it up again, okay? And you should get 1.312749, etc. So we're only rounding to four decimal places, so 1.3127. All right, so that concludes the lesson. My advice to you would be print out as many blank unit circles as it takes and then just practice filling them in by memory until you have it down packed. And you can reference it now, but just the more you force yourself to burn it in your brain, the better off you're going to be, especially moving forward in calculus. I can't even tell you how many times students who just don't learn the unit circle struggle later on, and there's no need. Okay, one more lesson, and then we're done with chapter three.